also welcome to your session on creating and managing your marketing content. As we go through the information today, I would highly encourage you to ask questions, um, get to make sure that you get all of the information that you need about how to use the marketing platform um, and really manage the content that's in the system in an efficient way. Um, we are going to be really focused on just creating um, individual content today um, with the goal that next week on Monday, we're going to be going into creating mark marketing drip email campaigns. So today it's really about creating individual pieces. How can you utilize them? And then next week, we're going to jump further into creating drip marketing campaigns. As we get started with this today, to access your main marketing dashboard, you're going to go ahead and go through and go to the marketing section on the left hand side of your screen. So you can see here, I've zoomed in, I'm going to go to marketing. Now, um, for those of you who don't know a lot about the system, you can absolutely go in. There is underneath my orders. This is where you're going to access your postcards. But where we're going to spend our time today is underneath my saved content, print materials, and email materials. Good morning, Julia. So as we go in, where I would like to begin is going in, and when you click on my saved content, whether it is here or here under e-marketing or print marketing, it's going to take you to your main content dashboard. So when I click there, I'm going to see all of the events that I have created in the past. So that's how you get to all of your saved content. Again, that is underneath marketing, my saved content, and it will open up your main content dashboard. At the top, you're gonna to see a section that says personal, and you'll also see a section that says company. Underneath the company is where you can see content that your company has created for you. And from here, if you wanna print, email, or share a piece of company content, you absolutely can do that. Um, we're gonna go in a little bit further down that as well. And um, get there. Thanks, Taya, for the heads up. Um, and we're going to really start underneath the personal content. So if you want to scroll through content you've already created, you absolutely can do that. You can also search. So you can go in and say, hey, I need to see a name that contains uh, maybe the 4th. And you want to see all of the 4th of July postcards you have done. Good morning, Jen. Um, but this search is going to be looking at the title of the piece. You actually can also go in and search by category. So if you wanted to see letters and bring up all of the letters that you have created, you absolutely could do that as well. To create new content, you're going to click the plus add content in the upper right hand corner. Now, something to note when you put add content to your content library, this is something that can be utilized in multiple places. So you can take the content you create and you can uh, print it out one time or email it out one time. So it can be a one-time event if you create a piece of content. The other thing you can do with one piece of content is you can add it to one or many drip marketing campaigns. So if I create a welcome letter response for a new lead, I could attach that to one or many campaigns, email drip campaigns. The last thing that you can do with an individual piece of content is you can attach it to an action plan. So an action plan is a series of follow-up events, both digital via email or drip marketing campaign, as well as manual, meaning, hey, I need to remind myself to call or to text this person. And you can use that one piece of content across all three of those different items. So. It is best practice to create your content first in order to really make sure you're utilizing the maximum value of that piece. Now, there are different types of content that you can create. Um, there's blank content, there are e-blasts, options, 
there are property flyers. And using this category section on the right hand side is where you can really drop down and filter what's going on. So if I want to create an open house e-blast, I have several templates to choose from that I can utilize. If I want to create something that's blank, that's all my own, I can absolutely do that as well. I choose blank content. Maybe I want to highlight three lenders, or maybe I want to talk about the pros and cons of getting a home warranty, or perhaps I want to link through to a website and have some menu items here. Um, there are many different types of blank content. I'm just going to choose this blank content one to jump in and start looking at what that looks like, especially when it comes to organization and really managing your content in an effective way. One thing you'll want to know is underneath any piece of content, I have a detail section where I can name my content. I can also give it a category name. So if I name this content, uh, maybe this is my June uh, promo letter and I can give it a category name and notice that as I start typing, all of the different categories that I've already created begin to show here. So I might say, hey, this is a lead letter for 2020. I've got a content name. I've got a category name. I'm working on that organization of what I'm doing so that I can easily search through my content. Any questions so far, either about how you get to the individual My Saved Content section or about how to create and start a new piece of content? Hey, I'm gonna add content here. Any questions there that I can answer for you all? Okay. So as you're going through and building your content, you've given it a name. And you've given it a category so you can easily sort by it. You can go ahead, you can edit that content. Now, if you've chosen blank content, you're going to notice at the top of your screen, you have a drop down here where you can choose contact first name or address or a property ID. So What's nice about this is you can create content that although it looks generic, you can add individualized information. So I might say something like, hello, contact first name. Um, can you believe we are already halfway through June? Um, maybe you're doing a community garage sale. Maybe you're looking for more information. Um, maybe you're looking to update your contact records. You can absolutely go in and say, hey, I am in the process of updating my contact records. Um, and then you could say, hey, is this your cell phone number? Is this your cell phone number? Um, and is this your um, current address? Maybe you want to say, um, is this your phone number? I'm hoping to schedule some time to talk about the value of your purchase at, I can go in, I can add last transaction ad address and how the market has affected it. Um, so you can absolutely insert some specific information. The other thing that I do really like about this is there is a section here for a your agent email signature. So if you use this agent email signature bracket automatically, when you update your signature in your profile, so if you go into your account, your profile, and you update your signature, you don't have to go back in and touch every piece of content, right? So I can use my agent signature. I've got some contact information here. Now at the top, I've got some options. I can save and get HTML. So if I want to post this to my blog, I can do that. If I want to save and print this, no big deal. I can click save and print. And it is going to ask me for my contact. Hey, I'm going to add which contact in. 
because I use those automatic fill fields, right? So I need to make sure that it fills in correctly. I can save and share this, or I can simply save this and use it for later to access. Now, a couple things I do want to talk about is um, many of you work for companies that have created content. So your company has created content for you. And some of you have gone ahead and you've made your own content. So you've gone in, you've spent some time adding content, and perhaps in that content, you went ahead and went through and you templated out a table where it's fancy. So you're taking a blank piece, you're going in and you're adding a table and you're saying, hey, I want uh, three columns across the top, and then I want, um, you know, two columns below that, because I'm gonna do some featured highlights, and I'm, I'm really templating out what my newsletter, I want my newsletter template to look like. So I might have this as my newsletter template. And you've saved it. Now, if you're within your document or your library, so my saved contents, if I go in and I say, um, I'm looking for contains with template, I can see my newsletter template here. You can't, within this screen, create a copy of this. But if you go to marketing and you click that you wanna create maybe some email content, there are some other options. And this is where organizing your content pieces becomes really helpful. Because here you can see there's that content type, right? This screen looks like just like that screen we had when we created that content. So I'm gonna go in and I can go in and I can access my content. So now it's gonna process and it's gonna filter down to all the content that I've done. Then I could go in and I could actually say, hey, I need to see my template, okay? I've got a newsletter template here. I'm gonna select this content. I'm gonna put in all my information and then I'm gonna send it out. So again, to get there, I went into marketing. I either said email or print. Once I did that, I selected my content. And then for my content, I could filter it down by the content categories that I had, and I could access that information. Okay, content type, it's my content. The categories are all here. Here's my templates. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna edit, and I'm gonna add my information. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna click Save and Print. You can also do that with company content. So if I go in and I wanna create maybe a, a company newsletter, maybe my company has made a great newsletter, but I wanna adjust it a little bit, okay? I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say, I wanna see my company content. Here's my company content. I can see that I've got this client event here. And now I can go in and I can edit this. Hey, contact first name, here's all my information. I'm writing my letter, I'm clicking okay. I can save and print this, I can save and email it, I can save and share it. So if your company has created content that you really like, but you're not, you wanna change specific pieces of it. No big deal, go into marketing, go into either print or email, depending on how you want to deliver it. And then you can go ahead and you can choose from the company content underneath the categories. So it is really important as you're creating your content that you are naming it. It is also really important that not only are you naming it, but you're giving it a category so you can easily filter through it. Company content, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do maybe my 4th of July, and I'm gonna edit this information. I don't want that to be that big, I wanna add information about a community event. Absolutely, that's a great question, Taya. So after I save this, hey, I've got this piece of content, I'm creating a new, I'm gonna call it, um, Taya 
uh, email 2020. Once I click save, it is going to take that piece of company content and now it's created it as my content. So that I can have it in my content library. So it not only, it makes a copy and it saves it as your content. So yes, when you save company content after editing it, once you go into the print and the email, it saves it as a piece of your content that you can utilize. Does that answer your question, Taya? Great question. Other questions, as we start to look at this and start to look at organizing and creating content, um, are there other questions just about the creation of content before we start to talk about how do you start to brainstorm what kind of content you should have? Any questions so far on making content or how to add a category name or a content type? If not, no big deal. Go ahead, type in that chat box. Nope, we're good to go on and start talking about how I'm going, what content I need and what, how to generate that. Because I do want to make sure we have enough time to talk about that as well and that I'm bringing you value in how you can set it up. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. That's a, um, so Julia has a great question. If I have a letter, how do I upload it to a campaign? So Julia, before you upload it to a campaign and next week we're really going into creating campaigns and having that, um, the first thing you wanna do is you would want to create it as a piece of content. So you would take that letter that you've created. I'm gonna say, hey, I'm going to add a piece of content here and you would create that blank piece of content. Hey, I'm going in, I'm selecting that content, I'm uploading my letter here, and then once you've created that content, when you're making your campaign, you can access that letter. So the first step is adding your content and creating your letter. Uh, Sarah, for your question, I'm going to have you reach out to support um, to get that answered. That sounds to me more like um, a bug than a, a training thing. So I'm going to have you reach out to support on that. And Jen, I am not talking about postcards today. Really, I'm talking about creating marketing content as far as print or email and starting that process of how do you create it so that next week we can go through and talk about campaigns. Yep. So because you want to create all of your content first, your letters, your property flyers, your holidays and all of that, how do you know what content you need? That I think is the biggest question that people ask themselves. Hey, I want to do some marketing. I really am excited. I want to have email campaigns, but I don't know what to put on them. So like what kind of letters do I need? What kind of promotional newsletters do I need? How do I go about making sure that my content is relevant to my consumer, right? Because that's a big deal. How do I make sure that my consumers are getting good information? And to do that, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Um, we are going to go back and look at our customer relations here. So when you start to think about what content you need, you need to think about your customers first. And so last week we talked about organizing your contacts and leads and the importance of really digging in and looking at a specific contact. Hey, I'm going to go in. I'm going to look at uh, my content tagged Tammy. I'm going to put my source where I found her, the status of where she's at in the buying process. And then I'm gonna look at the contact types. So I'm gonna label her, is she a seller? Is she a family member? Is she a referral agent? 
and I'm going to add those contact types. Now, when it comes to adding and creating content for specific contacts, it is easiest to think about a person first. So if you're going in and you're thinking about, I want to create a campaign about, um, you know, reaching my past sellers. I want to have a campaign that's for my circle of influence. I want to have a campaign that's for my farm and ranch clients. That is really broad. And so I want to really scope it down and start getting you thinking about a person because it is much easier to think about what one person would find relevant than an entire group of people. So if I have a contact type that is a referral agent, rather than thinking about, I don't know what to say to my referral agents in Texas versus my referral agents in Seattle versus my referral agents in Minnesota versus my referral agents in California, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna think specifically about one contact. So maybe I'm thinking specifically about my contact, uh, Lisa in Texas as an agent and what she finds interesting about my market. Because when I start to drill it down that far, it's really easy for me to make a list of what content she would like to receive, right? When I start to think about my one past seller, Tammy, who's now a homeowner, I can say, okay, you know what ta questions Tammy asks me? She asks me about um, projects she can do that add value. You know, she asks me about um, things that are happening in the community. She asks me about market updates. Her and I also just like to chat about general life. So now I've got a list of four things, right? So I've got a project product that add value. I've got community events. I've got market updates and I've got general life events. Well, that begins to really help me know what kind of content I should generate. Because if I create a marketing piece that is about projects, that add value to your home. And I can brainstorm five major projects that people talk about. So for example, maybe I'm gonna do a spring project talking about landscaping, uh, spring cleaning, and servicing your air conditioner. Maybe in the fall, I'm gonna do a projects list that talks about um, making sure your service, your furnace is serviced, getting your carpets cleaned, and um, checking and making sure that you are, you know, sealed up for winter, depending on your location. Maybe in the winter, I'm going to talk about, you know, um, snow shovel, ice dams, and those things. And now all of a sudden, I've got four project-based emails to send out. Maybe I'm coming out with a monthly community event newsletter. Maybe I'm doing a monthly market update piece. And maybe I'm doing four general life update emails a year saying, hey, Carol, super excited to check in and just want to drop you a line, see how things are going. You know, life is busy as always at our house. My daughter's growing really fast. My business is growing. I'm really excited that summer's here. We're looking forward to, you know, camping this summer and we're doing a couple house updates. How are things with you and your family? Can't wait to hear back from you. Um, I hope things are going well. And I do four of those a year. Well, now when you start to think about that type of content, I have 12 community events. I have 12 market updates. That's 24 pieces of content that you've created. And then you've got four project emails going out a year and four regular updates. So now you've got 32 different events reaching out to that group. 
what once seemed daunting about what am I going to put in it is now I've got 32 events and I know what they are. I've got a quarterly project. I've got a quarterly general, general email. I've got a monthly uh, community events and I've got a monthly market update. And those things are going to my homeowners. Now, what about for my buyers? You, and you would do that same exercise for each contact type. Any questions on that? Because really when you go in and you start to think about your marketing as people, how do I follow up with Pam? Okay, Pam is um, a contact type of um, my, um, she's a coworker. I can add her to that coworker group. Um, maybe I can go in, I wanna look at Sydney and she's you know a seller, she's in my mom's group, She's a teacher and I click save. Okay, so for my mom's group, when I'm thinking about Sydney, what kind of information does she wanna receive? And I build that list of content. Now, as you're doing this, the other item becomes time blocking, right? And Carol, I see your question. I'm gonna to get to that in just a second. So creating 32 pieces of content at one time is a daunting task. But the next piece of it is, okay, that's a daunting task, 32 pieces for sure. But really, I only have, every month I have two pieces and every fourth month I have an additional two pieces. So now can I time block out an hour of my time a month or maybe I'm time blocking out 30 minutes of my time a week to work on marketing material. Because now I've got my list of what needs to be created. I'm gonna time block out a minimum of an hour a month. Maybe I'm gonna do 30 minutes a week. Maybe I'm gonna do an hour a week. Can I find an hour of my week to write three emails? And I go in and I create that content first and then I can cross promote it because I might have a market update email campaign and I might have a community event email campaign that I can attach to multiple contact types. So I don't have to recreate the wheel for everything because I'm going into my marketing, I'm creating that content first. I can attach it to individual campaigns. I can attach it to um, send it out onesie twosie or I can have it be part of an action plan. Creating that content is the first part, knowing what contact content to create, going in and looking at your contacts, thinking about one person and how you create content for just one person, and then scaling it out so you know what you're building is a great tool. Um, so a couple questions um, in the chat box that I want to make sure we get addressed. Um, one is if I want to send a letter to out-of-state owners that I'm farming about um, the market now, um, how would I do that? Um, can I access that spreadsheet list from Excel when I'm creating my content? So I, when I, I believe, Carol, your question is, hey, I'm in my saved content. I have created this piece of content here. And I've got some, some drop downs of contact name, all of that. How do I access people on an Excel spreadsheet? Um, and the answer to that is you have to import them into your CRM. So in your CRM, you would import that contact list as a contact type out of state owners. But they have to be in your CRM. All of your efforts in marketing need to be measurable. You need to know when people are opening your email. You need to know how many times they're opening your email. You need to store their information somewhere that interacts with your marketing and with your listings. And to do that, you put them in the customer relations first so that you can access them through your marketing center. Great question.
Um, Jen says, hey, they're really focusing on um, marketing towards listings. So is there anything you can share with me about um, how do you go about creating content for listings and that part of it? Um, and this is my um, biggest insight when it comes to getting more listings. I think that we all have heard the old adage, he who lists last. So whoever is um, taking listings is going to last in this business. The more listings you have, typically the more buyers you have, you have really built, you have a business to build upon. So how do you go about creating marketing content to gain more listings? And my answer to that is you need to not think about it as getting a listing now. Um, we have a long buy cycle. So according to the National Association of Realtors, homeowners are in their houses for about 10 years. And so one thing is when you're starting to build your list of who you're going to be reaching out to, um, you need to be pulling that list of who's been in their home for six or more years. You need to know who the homeowners are, and then you need to create content that is valuable to people who own their home. So if you are a homeowner, which many of you on this call I'm sure are, is it everybody on this call, who here owns a home? If you can say, yes, I own my home, or yes, I have a mortgage, like I'm in the process of owning my home in that chat box, that will help me answer this question. I'm sure there's a few of you who maybe don't. There are real estate agents who don't own their home. So here's the question for all of you. And this is a great resource and I think it's an exercise that we don't do very often. What information as a homeowner do you find valuable from your vendors? I love that the guy that did the deck on my house sends me a quarterly update about the maintenance that I need to do to keep my deck looking great. I love that our furnace company sends me reminders of what I need to do with my furnace. I love that my mortgage provider sends me an update anytime the value on my home changes. I like getting those. What's my home role? Home worth. What pest control do I need to do? How do I do maintenance? Are there any special sales going on? Right? Lowe's and Home Depot email us all the time. Hey, we have a new carpet incentive. And as a real estate agent, you need to think the information that you want to receive is the same information that your clients want to receive. Information on home values, information on neighborhood sales, information on pest control, on maintenance, on projects, information on city ordinances, especially when it comes to vacation rentals, people want to know what the vacation rental laws are. Can my neighbor have an Airbnb? Did that change? What's happening with city ordinances? What's happening with street maintenance? What's happening with construction in my area? And as we start to think about that and you put yourself in those personal shoes, it will be very easy to think about what information your potential sellers want. Because this is all about the long-term relationship, right? This is not about, hey, I'm going to sell my bike or my mattress or my couch. Your home is a very personal item. You have to build a relationship first before someone wants to sell with you. And most people who sell are not going to use the same agent they bought through because the average selling time is 10 years and the average agent stays in the business for eight. So there's tremendous opportunity. So thinking about how you can make that personal, thinking about how you can make that valuable information is important. Jen, does that help you?
So when, for those of you, because there's some of you that don't own a home. So for those of you who don't own a home um, or you rent, how many of you on the call don't own a home? It's a, there's not, this is not a trick question. Awesome. So for those of you that don't own a home, think about the information that you want to know as someone who's renting. So if you're looking for buyers on the other side of that, people who want to buy either own their home or they don't, right? So we just talked about how to find people that own their home. So let's talk about how to find those people that don't own their home, right? They're renting. So if you don't own your home right now, what information do you want to know about the purchase process, home ownership, mortgage rates, the value of renting versus buying? What information as someone that doesn't own your home do you find valuable about where you're at with renting? Because here's the other thing, right? People who rent, like that you still live there, you still live in a home. Whether you're renting or owning a home, it doesn't change the fact that that is your home. As a renter, you know what, when I, when I was renting, I wanted to know about things that I could do in a rental to make it feel more like my own place. I wanted to know about temporary wallpaper. I wanted to know about um, how to hang curtains without ruining the walls. I wanted to know about the best way to clean an oven after I made cookies and they burnt all over the inside of my oven and I knew I was gonna have to clean that out when I moved out. I wanted to know about maximizing my storage and organizing my life. So Julia and Lisa, any insights on what, as a renter, information that you would like on your home? I also wanted to know how much my landlords were making. Right? Did you know you're paying your landlord's mortgage? They're making X amount of dollars approximately on you? That's a big deal. And that's a way to find buyers. And depending on your market, there are markets where it is better to rent. What are the benefits of renting? Hey, homeowners that live out of state, do you know the benefits of renting? If they're gonna move back into, yes, who do you hire to help move out and cleaning? So Lisa said, that's a great point. It's temporary for me. Who do you hire to move out and help cleaning? How do you make sure that you're keeping the, the carpets clean? What do you do if you spill something on carpet? What do you do when you get red, how do you get red wine out of a carpet? How do you find a short-term rental? How do you even negotiate a short-term rental? For homeowners out of state, is it better to have a furnished rental or an unfurnished rental? What are the pros and cons of each? That's a ton of information in a very consolidated amount of time. I told you we'd be right at that 30, 40 minute mark. We're right there. So for those of you on the call, um, what I would encourage you to do is start making those lists. So find a contact in your contact type or in your contact list for each of those types of contacts, buyer, renter, homeowner, uh, family, friend, circle of influence, and start to think about what those lists of content are that you want to create. Because next week, we're gonna talk about how you take that content 
and you attach it to marketing campaigns and you attach it to action plans to really build your plan. Uh, Lisa, that's a great question. Where do you get all this information? Example, how do you get red wine out of carpet? Google is your friend. I do a ton of reading. I also will tell you that reaching out to local vendors is an awesome resource for you. So going in and saying to your vendors, hey, I know everybody. So last week, if you were on the call, my daughter came downstairs and today my dog is really wanting outside because there's turkeys in my yard. <laughs> so uh, how to get red wine out of carpet? Reach out to a local carpet cleaner and say, hey, I want to do a featured email this month on how to get red wine out of carpet. Can I, can I do an interview with you and feature your company? Also, would you want to do any kind of a promo in that email that says like, hey, schedule your carpet cleaning before this date and mention this code and get $5 off? Your local vendors and your local relationships are an unbelievable place to get information for your marketing. That is all I have for you all today. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, we are doing a session at 9.15 today um, to really dig into and go through how to manage your listing. It's a, a listings overview session. Um, this recording will go out today. Thank you again for your time and we'll see you next week.